how would you handle radioactive substances and why we follow the advice of the RPA which is, stands for Radiation Protection Advisor who will tell us what to, what to do and what not to do and we follow the guidelines listed in L93 provided by Cleops. L93 is the Managing Ionization, ionization Radiation Substances in Schools and it's pretty much our bible for working with radioactive sources in college. Some of the guidelines include wearing uh, disposable gloves, latex disposable gloves, so if you've got any cuts or nicks on your hands um, there's a particular type of radiation called alpha radiation, you don't want that getting into your body because it can't penetrate skin so once it gets in it can't get out and it could cause cancers if it gets into your bloodstream so that's where the nicks and cuts have to be covered up with disposable gloves and your eyes have to be covered with goggles you have to wear goggles at all times because um, the radiation could damage your eyes because your eyes are made of t more sensitive tissue than just uh, normal skin like around you, that's around your eyes and on your head we have a logging procedure uh, so you have to sign it, sign out a source uh, tell me which room it's going to, what time you signed it out and you bring it back and you sign it back in um, and what time you brought, returned it and that's all done under my supervision so it's a, a level of security we have to keep um, the sources are kept under lock and key at all times unless they're being used in a room and um, every person has to read something called the standard operating procedures um, this is a summary of L93 basically makes them aware of what to do, what not to do um, how to handle a source, uh, this, the, the equipment they have to wear, um, stuff like using uh, tongs to hold to pick up cup sources so they can just pick it up and place it rather than handle it with their hands which then again reduces the amount of uh, radiation you come into contact with. Um, that's pretty much it for how we do things here at college. In industry, I imagine it's, I've never worked with uh, ionizing radiation in injury in, in, in industry uh, but I imagine it's a more, it's on a grander scale, so you have full body suits and you handle them, you sign them, you know, everything's highly secured and all that sort of thing and everything has its own, there's a lot of procedures to go for, a lot of paperwork to fill in obviously to, because you don't want these, the, the more serious sources, uh, the, they've got higher what's called activity, which means they can be more damaging to the environment or to people if they come into contact with them, and you want to minimise the amount of contact you want, to, uh, that people want to come into them, um, because if you're doing it every day you can be coming in contact with these sources every day and they're more powerful as well so the paperwork probably and the, the precautions we take will be much higher um, I think a good place to look at is uh, www.hse.gov.uk forward slash uh, pub ns forward slash forward slash irp1 and that's a pdf and that's um, the HSE's uh, report on uh, their, their increasing way of handling and disposing of uh, uh, ionising radiation in industry and in particular places like hospitals um, which use it quite a lot. Disposal radioactive sources, um, we in college do it, we can do it by two methods, one's called the painting method where you get a paint in fill it, put the source in, fill it with concrete, let the concrete set and throw it in a dispo in a landfill. Um, the law has changed in the last four or five or so years. Um, around 2010 the Radioactive Substances Act was replaced with Environmental Permitting Regulations 2010 which was then consequently amended in 2011. Um, so that would be a good place to look um, in more detail if you need questions answering. An example of what one of the amendments was that thorium and uranium compounds were then classed as hazardous, wa hazardous wastes. Uh, so their disposal is a little heavily restricted now um, in comparison to strontium-90, which I can do by the painting method. I can put it in a painting for the concrete and throw it in a landfill. Uh, uranium compounds and thorium compounds follow a similar sort of um, style of disposal that we would find in industry which is um, a contractor would come in they you would have to sign over the compounds to them they would dispose of them uh, in probably the manner of putting them in massive concrete crate, crate, crates taking them out to the North Sea and bury them in the North Sea and that means then basically we are now because you bury them in concrete even gamma rays can can't get around they're mostly reduced in concrete and bury them under the sea as well 
deep down in the sea is means that we are reducing the fact that these things are in the environment they're pretty much safe now they're not going to harm anybody they're not going to harm any animals or even get contaminate contaminate the gland around them so basically to summarize everything here is to do with minimizing your exposure to radiation minimizing the risk of getting any contaminants on your hands and the disposal is to minimize the amount of radiation that gets into the environment so the more you can minimize the radiation the better